song, our children singing glory, glory. children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing glory, glory, hallelujah, he reigns, he reigns, it's all God's children singing
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You reign. Just the mention of your name, Jesus. Demons tremble. Just the mention of your name, and the fever is gone. Just the mention of your name, and the heart is quieted. Just the mention of your name, and all creation sits up and takes notice. Just the mention of your name and mountains fall. Just the mention of your name and valleys rise. Just the mention of your name and seas are parted. Just the mention of your name and bridges are built. Thank you, Lord. 
And sometimes we don't even have to say your name out loud. It's just the mention of your name. Years ago, I was driving on a four-lane highway, and I started to slide on some ice, and I was headed right under a semi-truck. And I didn't even have time to say his name out loud, but in my heart, I just yelled, Jesus, and immediately the car straightened out, and I was fine. That's the power of the name of Jesus. Every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Great are you, Lord. Hallelujah. Like the Lord um, just impressing me. You wage war and you battle on my behalf and you fight and you do, and you do well to do so. But be careful that you don't wage war in my name for your expected results. You wage war and you battle in the spirit for my results. Yes. For my expectations and for my plans. You do not wage war for your own expectations, for your own expected outcomes. If you do so, you will be disappointed. Yeah. But when you wage war, and you are truly submitted to my plans and my purposes, says the Lord. Mm. You will have the victory. You will have peace. But there's a peace that comes from submission to me. There's a hope. There's a, a rest. Mm. There's a security. You may not like the results. Mm -hmm. But you need to trust in me and yeah. not in your expected results. Yes. You need to trust in me that I sit on the throne of heaven, that I rule supremely in this world, that I raise up and I put down. Mm -hmm. I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. And I will judge who will, whom I will judge. Your peace and security must be in me, not in what you expect from me, not in what you hope from me, but hope in me that I am able to perform all things according to my plans. Submit to me in your warfare. Yes. And not to what you believe. Mm. Yes. Yes,
understand I don't always get to see
Hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, glory, hallelujah. Yeah, 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 hallelujah. Jesus, down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. That's old saints. I'm singing glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. There at the cross, what did he do? He applied his blood. Glory to his name. I love this part. I am so wondrously saved from sin. How about you? Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross where he took me in. Glory to his name. I'm singing glory to his name, precious name. Glory to his name. There at the cross where he applied his blood, singing glory to his name. 
I don't know about you, saints. <laughs> but does he abide within? Glory, hallelujah. The sister said something this morning. Glory said it was something about the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright and morning star. Sweet Jesus, sweet Jesus. He's the governor of all nations. Bless his name. Hallelujah. How many know he's sweet? Glory, hallelujah. I don't want to let this go yet, saints. Steve, can you put that up there for me, that phrase I'll ask you about? I stopped by this morning to talk to you about your song. Glory, hallelujah. Is it up there? Somebody read that for me out loud. I praise before my breakthrough till my song becomes my triumph. I will sing because I trust you. I will bring my heart. I will lift my song. Can I hear you say, I will lift my song? Remember that as we go through today's word. Glory, hallelujah. Pray with me. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you today. Father, thank you. We love so much. I love so much when you manifest your presence among your people. Lord, I pray today as I bring forth your word. Give us a spirit of wisdom and revelation, O oh God. Revelation of what it is you want us to get out of this word and the wisdom to know how to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Turn with me, if you will, to Psalms 137. Psalms 137. We're going to begin at the first verse up until the fourth. Glory, hallelujah. In Psalms 147, you will find these words written. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down and wept when we remembered Zion. Upon the willows in the midst of it, we hung our harps. For our captors demanded of us songs and our tormentors mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. And the response, how can we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? I want to share with you this morning from this title. Don't lose your song. This is an account and a story, we all know it, uh, of the Israelites and they're in exile in Babylon. But today, I want to take this psalm, and I, I want it to bring it in, in, to, to us today, where we are. I want us to look at the rivers of Babylon and what it would represent today. It would represent circumstances or bad situations in life, whether it be struggles in your marriage, difficulties at work, Difficulty finding work, bills past due, no money to pay them. Somebody spreading rumors about you, there's nothing you can seem to do about it. How about this? You don't have as many Facebook friends as some of your Facebook friends have friends. You're sick and you just can't seem to get well. COVID-19 alone is has brought situations, circumstances you and I would never imagine we'd be in today. Stay at home came about. Business was shut down. Some were lost. Wear a mask. Oh, I don't want to wear a mask. Fear, confusion, and distrust. We've seen an uprise of anti-government attitudes. Intended peaceful protests overshadowed by rioting and looting. There is this political affiliation divide. There's been racial divide. 
And what I've seen over these last several months is an insensitivity for loss of life. And this is the body of Christ I'm referring to. Well, I believe this is a good time I should tell somebody, don't lose your soul. I also feel like I should say to somebody, I think you lost your song. And even to some, I would say, you need to get a song. Glory, hallelujah. Zion in this text today will represent to you and I a place of peace as men and women of God. In fact, Jesus said in John 14, 27, he said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. Listen, not as the world gives do I give to you. And, 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 and listen to this, because this is crucial for us today. He says, do not let your heart be troubled, nor be fearful. And yet, in light of everything that's happening since COVID over the last four months or so, that's all I think we have been. We've been fearful. We've allowed our, tr our hearts to be troubled. We've turned on each other. We, 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 I go on Facebook and I, I just read. I don't respond, but I look and I read some of the things of those that are professed Christians. And it's a little frustrating as a believer to hear what we as people of God are writing all over Facebook. <laughs> I believe it probably saddens our Father in heaven when he looks at us and we're responding the same way that the world is. Well, that should not be saints. Jesus said that he would leave his peace. We would have his peace. But I feel like the Israelites, we have hung our harps on the willows. Matthew chapter 6, verses 25 through 34, and in the NASB, Strong's version, it has a title. It says, the cure for anxiety, because I believe that's what I'm seeing so much out of the body of Christ. We, we seem to be so anxious and full of anxiety, but Jesus said, for this reason, I say to you, do not be worried about your life as to what you will eat or what you will drink, nor for your body as to what you will put on. Is not life more than food and the body more than clothing? He says, look at the birds in the air. They don't sow, nor do they reap in, or gather in the barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. And then he asked this question. He said, are you, are we not worth more than they? And yet I, I see we sometimes treat the animals better than we treat one another. I think that's a good place to tell you, don't lose your song. He talks about the lilies of the field, and he says in verse 29, he said, Yet I say unto you, not even Solomon in all of his glory has clothed himself like one of these. But if God so clothes the grass of the field, which is alive today and tomorrow is thrown into the furnace, he says, how much more will he clothe you, you a little faith? And I want to point something back at a sentence because he said, but if God, and then he says, you of little faith, faith in God. Hallelujah. Verse 32 says, For the Gentiles eagerly seek all of these things. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things, but seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. I think the question then becomes, what is? God's kingdom and his righteousness. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, right living according to God's word, and peace, the peace of God, and joy. And this is a joy that's on the inside, based, not based on external happenstance. In other words, uh, happiness can be because it's Friday and I just got paid. Uh -huh. Happy can be 
that, that my wife cooked me a really good, one of my favorite meals, and so I'm happy. Glory, hallelujah. Happy can be, I just got a brand new car. You should check it out. But see, that doesn't last. Uh, uh, because the meal you're going to eat and digest, it won't be before you anymore. The new car is going to become a used car. You may still like it, but you won't like it as much. You won't be as happy as when you first got in and it started a key. See, that's happenstance. That, that passes on. But the joy is on the inside. Glory, hallelujah. Joy of salvation, David said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. This is what he says in the end of that. He says, this is, it is uh, um, righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit. In fact, in other words, this is what we should be pursuing after in cooperation with the Holy Spirit. Therefore, as Christians, I say, saints of God, where and why are we so full of anxiety? Glory, hallelujah. Listen to what Paul says about anxiety in, 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 in Philippians 4, 6, 7. He says, be anxious. Some version says, don't worry about anything, but by prayer and supplications with thanksgiving. But I think often, as I look back at these last several months, not only are we anxious and we are worried, we aren't praying. We, 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 we have lost what it is we should be praying for because we're more concerned about what they are doing, they meaning whoever's made the decisions, the government, I guess I can say, because I've heard so much anti-government attitude coming from the body. Hallelujah. And we are told, I heard Dennis preach multiple times, I heard him say that we are to submit, as the word says, submit to governmental authority. And so instead, we get anxious and worried, and we, 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 we have, we, we, you know, I'm hearing we are losing our rights, and nobody can tell me to wear a mask, or, or I'm going to go wherever I want to go, when I want to go. But that's not what Paul said. He said, don't worry about these things, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Make our request known to God. And I love this part, Mary. So he says that, and the peace of God. Mm. A peace of God. That surpasses all understanding. While others are losing their mind right now and, and, and all upset and uptight because we seem to have lost some things. But can't nobody keep you from singing your song. Glory. I don't lose your song, saints. The willows represents, in this scripture, a time of rejoicing and singing praises to God. Leviticus 23, 40 says, now on the first day, and this, this talks about, I don't have time to go into the history, about, but this is about the tone, uh, uh, day of atonement. And in verse 40, it says, now on the first day, you shall take yourselves to the foliage of beautiful trees palm branches and boughs of leafy trees and willows of the brook. And you shall rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. But instead, they said, we hung our harps on the willow. We hung here represents choosing to give up, to be overwhelmed by the circumstances, taking your eyes and focus off Jesus. I looked up this word in the concordance hung. It says to put to death. So we literally take our joy and we take the peace as men and women of God that we're supposed to have and we put it to death. We hang it on the willow. It reminds me of Peter walking on the water. The Bible said that when he looked and saw Jesus, and he, Jesus told him, he said, don't, don't worry, it's me, it's, 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 it's Jesus. And Peter said, if it's you, Lord, bid me to come out. Jesus said, come, Peter came, walking on the water to Jesus. 
But when the pandemic happened and when they said that we were going to have to stay home, <laughs> and they said that work, you're going to have to not work, you, you, got, you got to stay home, we took our eyes like Peter off Jesus, and we saw the winds in the wave of all those decisions, and we begin to sink. I'm also reminded at the boat, Jesus is in the back sleeping. There's a storm <laughs> happening. <laughs> winds and the waves are blowing. The Bible said that it even over, overtook the boat. There was water all in the boat. The disciples, see, there's a difference in seeing Jesus and focusing on Jesus. See, Peter saw Jesus, responded, Jesus said, come. The winds and the rain, he began to realize that I'm on this water. He began to sink. He took his eyes off Jesus. The disciples that were in the boat during the storm, in the winds and the waves and the waters flying in the boat, they knew Jesus was there, but they weren't focused on Jesus. Because if they were focused on Jesus, I think two things wouldn't have happened. One, they wouldn't have ran and wake him up, right? And if they did, they wouldn't have asked this question. Do you care that we perish? See, they saw Jesus, but they weren't focused on Jesus. They weren't thinking and remind, remembering who this man was. And I, I don't know, Dan, but I, I'm thinking that if they were focused on Jesus, when they looked at Jesus laying in a boat, the Bible said that he was on a pillow sleep. I would have looked at him. You would think if they were focused on him, they would have said, oh, then we all right. <laughs> Let me go find me a place to sleep too. That should have been the response. But instead, they were moved by the circumstances. They were moved by what was going on all around them. The harp in this text, saints, represents your joy, your strength, your song. Psalms 100 says, Shout joyfully to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful, what? Singing. Glory, hallelujah. Now, I, I know you've heard uh, the saying, you got to read between the lines, right? Uh, you, you've heard that phrase. And, and even if we read this text right here, saints, and if we were to read between the lines, I, I, I can't find anywhere that it would say, only when things, Dominique, are going well make a joyful noise. I, I, I can't find in here in between the lines anywhere would it, it is said, only when you have it your way, make a joyful noise to the Lord. I don't see anywhere in between the lines. I, I, and I'm, I'm not that smart. And, 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 and even if I try as hard as I can, I, I can't find anywhere in here where it would say, only when things are going well, make a joyful noise. He says, come before him with joyful singing. Know that the Lord himself is God. It is he who have made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Now, I'm a city dude, so I don't know a whole lot about farming and herding. But, but what I understand about sheep and the shepherd, the shepherd cares for those sheep. The shepherd spends time and he, he makes sure the sheep stays within the fold. He protects the sheep from the wolves and the ravenous beasts that would hunt it. If we are the sheep of God's pasture, then this pandemic, this stay at home, this all these things that are going on as a result of that, we will be fine. Glory, hallelujah. Don't lose your song. Glory, hallelujah. I love Ephesians 5, 15, 21. It says, therefore, be careful how you walk, not as unwise men, but wise, making the most of your time because the days are evil. That's a place for amen right there, huh? Glory, hallelujah. I, I think, Tim, I'm thinking of the letter Paul wrote to Timothy when he said in those last days, difficult times are come. I think the King James Version says perilous times, and he, he gives characteristics uh, of what and how people are going to be in those difficult times. He, 
He says something like they will be murderers, disobedient. They, they, they will be boastful and proud. He said they will be lovers of themselves, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Uh, you can debate with me after the service, but saints, I, I believe he's talking to the body of Christ as well. Glory, hallelujah. And, and, and when I go through those characteristics, I, I go before the Lord and say, Lord, am I in any of these or any of these characteristics, me, O oh God? And when he shows me anything, I repent, and I start to sing my song. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Glory, hallelujah. He says here, uh, verse 17, so do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not drink, uh, get drunk with wine, for that is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. You know, it's difficult. To be anxious, right, Mary Saul, it's, it's difficult to be depressed and fearful when you're filled with the Spirit of God. Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody within your heart to the Lord. Instead, <laughs> Martha, I'm seeing, people, Marla, I'm seeing people on Facebook, Christians, going back and forth about what my right is and what this is happening and why that and I am, yeah, you feel me? Instead, we should be calling up our brother and sister. How you doing? I, I know you're locked up right now. You, 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 you're set up in a home and you can't get away like, a, like you used to. I just want to call that you know I'm thinking about you. you know, let, let, let's sing this song together. We, we are doing that, saints of God. Glory, hallelujah. But we're responding the same way the world is and I think when this all passes by, and if we hadn't listened to the last 18 weeks or so of teachings that have come uh, since then, when this passes by, and it's going to get worse, if we have not, how you said it, Owen, filled our oil, if we haven't done that, you won't be of any use to Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. Uh, verse 20 says, always giving thanks for all things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father, and be subject to one another in the reverence of Christ. The scripture then goes on and says, for they're our captors and our tormentors. I want to spend a little bit of time right here. The captors and the tormentors for us represent demonic spirits and their activities during bad circumstances and situations you are not faced. The spirits like the spirit of fear, the spirit of depression and oppression, the spirit of confusion, hallelujah. You, you know, they, 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 they hang out in gangs. You know that, right? Spirits, they, you, you won't just get one. They, they, they hang out in gangs. Uh, uh, you know, you go and look at uh, what Jesus said. He said, when the spirit has come out of a man, he goes to dry places seeking for another house to dwell. And he says, uh, after going around, he comes back and he finds that house only cleaned out and things put in order. He brings seven spirits worse than himself. And that person is worse off than they were before. Uh, saints of God, listen, don't, it, it's more than just getting saved. Uh, except in Jesus. Uh, you know, Paul says we are not to be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. It's a progression. Uh, saints, we got to get in the Word. We, we got to spend intimate time alone with Jesus. And we got to love one another. Jesus said when they asked him, what are the greatest commandments? He said, all of them rest on these two things right here. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and your strength. And the second one, he said, I like it unto this. Love your neighbors as yourself. I find sometimes, Mersaul, when I'm listening to the conversations we have about one another, I don't think that's the love Jesus is talking about. When, when sometimes I see how the body of Christ interacts, I, I, I don't believe that's the love Jesus was, was talking about when he said, love your neighbor. When, 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 I, when I think about how that we are so concerned about me and mine and we're not praying for the body of Christ all over the world. I, I don't think that's the love Jesus was talking about. Glory, hallelujah. 
So here's the question then. Brother Michael, you said don't lose my song, but you just don't know what I'm going through. You, 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 you don't know uh, how, how hard it is out here. Brother Michael, you, you didn't hear what, what they said about me. You, you, you don't, Brother Mike, I don't, I'm not sure about this losing your song thing. Uh, the question is, what am I to do then? Isaiah 40, 28 says it like this. Do you not know? Have you not heard the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, does not become weary? His understanding is inscrutable. I had to look that word up, Owen, because I, uh, what, what, that one, one is in my vocabulary. That, 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 <laughs> that just wasn't one of my words. I had to go and look that up. But, but, but if, if I was to define that, it would be his understanding is ununderstandable. <laughs> you can't understand his understanding. Glory, hallelujah. He says, he gives strength to the weary. If you're weary, call him. And to him who lacks might, he increases power. You need strength, call him. There's a song that says, Jesus on the main line, tell him what you want. Tough, though youth grow weary and tired, and vigorous young men stumble badly, yet those who wait for the Lord will gain new strength. (laughs) I like this version right here. Uh, it says you would gain new strength. This ain't strength you had before. You, 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 you see, I, I remember when I was in my 20s and early 30s playing ball, I can get dressed, Mersall, and go out in the court and just start playing. But when I got into like my mid-30s, I had to stretch a little bit, a lot of bit. I, I had to do some serious stretching. And in my 20s, I was playing, you know, five, six, seven, eight games. In my 30s, I was playing maybe two. And then after two games, I'd go home, Diane, where's the Advil? This is new strength you will get. Glory, hallelujah. A strength you haven't had yet. Glory, when you call on him, when you wait on him. He says, they will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not get tired. They will walk and not become weary. Glory, hallelujah. Colossians 3.12 says it like this. So as those who have been chosen of God, is anybody out here been been chosen of God? Just so live stream see it, there's some that raised their hands live stream, some of them didn't. but, But he said, as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Hmm. Put on a heart of compassion. You can't do that if you lose your song. Kindness. If you ain't singing a song, you ain't going to be too kind. Humility. Mm, some of them old gospel songs and songs you were singing this morning. Uh, Catherine, it's, it's, it's hard to not be full of humility when singing that. Amen? Glory. He says, gentleness and patience, bearing with one another. Here's again, he's talking about our relationship with one another, the word is talking about, and forgiving each other. Whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord has forgiven you, so also you and I need to forgive. That's a, uh, <laughs> it was downstairs in a prayer earlier, I was messing with Dan, and uh, I said, uh, good morning to Dan. Dan was kind of silent, so then I said, well, Dan, you know, in the black church, we're very responsive, and when you hear the preacher preach, it's a user, amen. So that was a perfect place for, okay, I like that right there. He says here, bearing with one another and forgiving each other, whoever has a complaint against anyone, just as the Lord forgave you, so you also should. Amen, amen. Beyond all these things, put on love, which is the perfect bond of unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart, so which indeed you were called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ richly dwell within you with all wisdom, teaching, and administering. Here he goes, that relationship again, one another, 
with psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Oh, my goodness, saints. Giving thanks through him to God the Father. Glory, hallelujah. You, you, you see, saints, I, I'm reminded, Acts 16, I'll end with this here. See, we have to be in a place that when we're going through, rather than complaining, that rather than, than allowing the enemy to come in and the, his gang of spirits to overwhelm you with anxiety and depression and oppression and a spirit of confusion and anger and all, rather than that, you got to get into the singing. You got to get your song. You, you got to be able to raise and lift your voice before the Lord. One perfect example is in the book of Acts. I love this story. You, uh, who, who is it? Uh, I'm trying to think of some movie script writers. I, I don't think Hollywood, there's, there, there's not a story, a movie that I've seen that Hollywood can touch this story. It's got everything in it. Uh, it is in the book of Acts, you remember 16, where Paul and Silas, uh, Paul said that they were heading in one direction, but he had or saw in a vision of a man in Macedonia saying, come over here and help us. Glory, hallelujah. And Paul and Silas go and make the journey, and they run into Lydia. Lydia was a cell of purple, and she was a woman that uh, she heard the word uh, Paul was preaching. The Bible says God opened her heart. She then uh, said, if you find me faithful to God, come over and stay in my house. Glory, hallelujah. They we're going back and forth. When I was growing up, we used to have those week-long revivals that started Sunday uh, morning that went in Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and, and then Friday. And I can see in my mind's eye, they're going to the prayer meeting. The Bible said that as they were doing this many days, a woman that had a spirit of divination were following them. And she was crying out that these are the men of God who here to proclaim the in the name of Jesus, salvation to us. And she was right. She was telling the truth. But the Bible said after a while, Paul became annoyed and grieved in the spirit. He turned and he commanded the demonic spirit that was in her to come out. Glory, hallelujah. For though what she said was truth, Paul discerned that it wasn't coming from the Holy Spirit, but from a demonic spirit. And as a matter of fact, that demonic spirit, there were two men who would use her and to give fortune tellers. Let me tell you right now, saints of God, and whoever professes to be a Christian, those of you I saw raise your hand, those that are listening on live stream, if you are a born-again Christian, glory, hallelujah, and you profess to be, glory, stay off of, uh, what is that called, the, uh, man, it just left my, uh, horoscope. Stay off of that horoscope. That's not your future, glory, hallelujah. I don't care how close, it comes to sound and good. It's not of the Holy Spirit. Quit looking for your palms to be read or psychic to tell you anything about what God has for your life. Glory, hallelujah. The Bible said that when these two men realized that she couldn't give the fortunes anymore, they couldn't make the money they were making off of her. They bought Paul, Paul and Silas into the marketplace. The Bible says they beat their clothes off of their body, and then they threw them into that Philippian jail. Come on, you must know the story. They said, said that because of the order that was given the soldier, he put him in the inner part of that prison. Oh, but then the Bible says about midnight. Glory, hallelujah. About midnight, Paul and Silas began to sing praises and songs to the Lord. And then he said, is it up there? All the prisoners heard them. Glory, hallelujah. What does that mean? That when you're going through, I'm not saying sing your song where only you, Lord, hallelujah, Jesus, look at me. No, 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 no. You see, they were singing and praising. The Bible says that all the prisoners heard them. Somebody need to hear your song Glory, hallelujah. Somebody need to know that when you're going through as a Christian, you don't walk around with your head down. You don't, 
You don't walk around with a bullhorn talking about what's going on and what you don't like and what's not happening. And how everybody, 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 yeah, uh, Owen says, blah, 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 blah. That's not what you are to do. You're to sing praises unto God. And I love because they said that when they begin to sing, as a matter of fact, I think of those revivals, Dan, when I was growing up in the church, especially the night revivals that started around about 6 o'clock. And they ended about 11.30 p.m. Glory, hallelujah. There was singing and shouting that was happening at that time. And I see in my mind's eye when we were little kids and the devotion, they call it devotional service. And you would have the devotional leaders come up and they would begin the devotional service. And one would look over and say, listen, why don't you have a prayer and I will, or you sing a song and I'll have a word of prayer. I, I can see Paul and Silas going through that exercise there in that Philippian jail. Their feet are bound in the stalks and their hands tied, but there wasn't nothing on their mouth. Glory, hallelujah. I, I can hear Paul lean over to Silas and Silas, why don't you sing a song and I'll have a word of prayer. Glory, hallelujah. I don't know what song uh, uh, Silas might have sang, but you know, I think of this song that says, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. No other help do I know if you withdraw thyself from me? And I can hear as Paul, Silas is singing this song, Paul would come in with a prayer. And the Bible said that as he prayed, there was a certain, a mighty earthquake, glory, hallelujah. And at that earthquake, the Bible says that the doors of that prison swung open, glory, hallelujah. All the chains were loose on the prisoners. And then wouldn't you know it, the Bible says that when the soldier who was appointed to watch Paul and Silas woke up out of his sleep, he took his sword uh, to, uh, and about to take his life because he rather take his own life than to go report that these men had escaped. But then listen to this. It says, Paul yells out to him, don't harm yourself. This is important, saints. He said what? We are all still here. Glory, hallelujah. See, when you don't lose your song, when you're going through something and you're singing your song and praises to the Lord, somebody who heard you say you were a Christian, somebody that heard you quote a scripture when things was going real well, when there was no problem, they, they, they saw you uh, with your head up. They, 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 they saw you even may have bought lunch for somebody they, when things was going well, but when things got real bad and they still see you with your head up. They still see and you say, hey, come on, let me take you to lunch. They, they, they hear and see you singing your song. It would be like that jailer when he, when he looked up and he realized that they were there that he heard Paul say, don't take your life, we're all here. The Bible says he ran in, fell before Paul. He said, what must I do to be saved? Glory, hallelujah. You see, I, I, I don't, Dominique, necessarily have a singing voice. I probably wouldn't get a recording uh, a, a contract. But, but I heard it said, a preacher said, it's not what your voice would do for others, it's what your song would do for you. Glory, hallelujah. Saints, don't lose your song. Glory, hallelujah. I don't care what we, and I mean that, I don't care what we're going through. I don't, and I'm not saying this as a, uh, as just a, a, a cliche. I have gone through some things, saints of God, and I know what it's like, Dan, that when I walked around with my head down, when I allowed the spirit of oppression and depression and fear and confusion come, I know what that's like. But I found it was so much better when I kept singing my song, when I kept my head up, even though I didn't know how it was going to turn out. By the time I got to the end of my song, even if I had to sing it a hundred and 50 times. When I got to the end of that song, I realized God had made a way out of no way. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, saints. Isn't God a good God? Glory, hallelujah. Sorry for the dead space. <laughs> We're still figuring this out. But let's not, 
let's not leave without responding to what God is saying. If you're out there and you've lost your song, your harp is hung on the willows, then God was speaking to you. Uh, he was talking to you. And so let's just close our eyes for a minute and just think. Hallelujah. And maybe you sing your songs when things are good, but when they get bad, you sing a different song. And so God is after that other song. He wants that song of the Lord to be always your song. Like when Kathy began to sing out, we had an awesome chance to join her. I don't know what you did, but I joined her. Because it was the song of the Lord. And as you sing that, and I watched Jeremy, he was like, well, do we go to the next song or what? And then he just took off and he got in it too. And so did Michael. You have to join the song of the Lord. And when you learn how to do that, man, I'll tell you, we took off. I, I was like, man, the whole meeting could have been that. You know, we could have just stayed there in the presence of God as singing his song. So don't be afraid of the song of the Lord. You know, it's not about how fast or how slow. It's not about how loud or how soft. You know, it's about your heart. The eyes of the Lord roam to and fro looking for a heart that's completely his that he may strongly support it. I love you. You want God's support? And make sure your heart is completely his. And that's what Mike's talking about. If you have the song of the Lord, you know, in the morning and the song of death in the evening, you've lost your song. <laughs> okay, you need the song of the Lord. And you start off singing the Lord in the morning and by the afternoon, you're caught up in all the news and all the stuff and you've lost your song. You know, you have the song of the Lord in the morning and then later, uh, because of circumstance, things going on, you lost your song and you hang your harp. And God's saying, don't do that. You know, let this not be a good message. Let this be the word of the Lord to you. I know it's the word of the Lord to me. I know it's the word of the Lord to us and those folks that are watching. It's the word of the Lord to you. So let's respond. Lord, we respond right now. Lord, we all have had experiences where we lost our song. Lord, we all. And sometimes we do it more often than we find the song of the Lord. And we ask you to forgive us. God, I pray that your song will become so good that when we're in captivity, when we're sequestered away, whatever is happening, we haven't lost our song. We sing. We worship. Thank you for that, God. Others are watching. It was the captives that made fun of those in captivity and, and said that. Where's your song now? Where's your song now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll tell you what, with Paul and Silas, he still had it, didn't he? he? They still had their song. Hallelujah. It didn't matter whether their clothes were beat off them or what. They had their song. So let's take a minute. Let's, God, we so much, Lord. We want to be consistent in our walk. And Lord, we want to represent you so much so that people look at us and wonder, why are they so different? Why are they singing? Why are they full of joy? Why are they thankful? Hallelujah. And Lord, that they'd ask the question and all the other prisoners didn't leave. Paul said, we're all here because they wanted to know what did they have that the prisoners didn't? Hallelujah. Lord, thank you for that. In Jesus' name, forgive us, Lord. If that's you, just acknowledge it before God, whether you're here or at home. Lord, I have a tendency to lose my song. God, I pray that help me. Help me to not be led, Lord, by television. Help me to not be led by the voices, all the voices that are out there. But help us to be led by the voice of your understanding. And Lord, when it gets hard, draw. May we draw on those songs that we sing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. I just want you, we were singing. I just want you. Kathy let out in the spirit of the Lord. Is he enough for you? If not, you're in trouble. Hallelujah. Lord, we want more of you. And we thank you for it. I receive your forgiveness. And I pray, help me bring to my remembrance this message. Lord, when things go south. Hallelujah. And bring forth that song. And help us to stop each other when we're starting to 
blah, 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 blah. And God, may we start to sing the song of the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't that good? Let's give the Lord a hand, everybody. (laughs) He's worthy of our praise. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for bringing the, the song of the Lord. Hallelujah. May we not leave here hanging up our harps. You know, don't throw the harp in the back seat. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, we're going to take our tithes and offerings at this point. Yay. And uh, you at home, I know, do you see the basket going by? <laughs> Make sure you send in your, your tithe or your offering. And we need continued support for the building fund, for new lighting, for the tech equipment. Uh, the, we got the inspection approved. Uh, so that's all done. So now all we have to do is build a wall and uh, move some of the stuff. And we're going to be up and running. I've already been getting, uh, you know, texts from people that want to come. Have you got that lift wired? And they, Oh, yeah. Yeah, there are people that want to come. And uh, so, and I know the Francis are chafing at the bit. You know, they would be here every, <laughs> every week during the COVID, you know, because they're just like, did he say they, it got inspected? Can we go now? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Hallelujah. So, hallelujah. Lord, thank you for your giving us this privilege of giving. Bless every hand that's giving, Lord, some out of need. And we sing this song. that you bless those that give. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. While they're doing that, we'll give you a few of the announcements. Uh, A woman's Bible study beginning in September is A Woman's Heart by Beth Moore. Rebecca needs $18 for the book by August 30th. Don Rumble's coming. September 10th through the 15th. And uh, we'll give you the list of when those meetings are. I know it's also a time of a wedding. (laughs) So did you guys want to announce that? Have you announced your wedding yet? (laughs) Don't, Don't do what? Yeah, come on up. Come up here. Come here. Come on. Family is family. Yeah, come right up here and just tell everybody what's happening. This is so cool. Hi. Um, we're getting married <laughs> on September 13th. <laughs> Do you want to say anything? <laughs> no, it's just paying oh. attention to the AV. Uh, yeah. We're getting married. Um, I don't know what else there is to say about it, uh, but we've we've known each other for a while and started dating last year. And uh, I don't know, just everything that the Lord has done for us uh, has just kind of put us on this path to becoming married. So we're pretty excited for that. Amen. Just want to pray for you guys. Thank you, God. Thank you for Andreas and and uh, Mariah, Lord. Thank you for the miracle that you've been doing in their lives. Thank you for the counseling, premarital counseling they're getting by Andreas' pastor. Lord, thank you for how they're growing and developing. We know how Esther and I, when we got together with them for dinner, we're just so blessed, Lord, at what you're doing in their lives. And we just see that you have so much in store for them. And so we pray for them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that you would continue to bless them right up to this day when they become one and we see the miracle. And we thank you for it, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, let's give the Lord a hand. He's worthy of our praise. Thank you for doing that. Okay, we're going to have a baptism. It's going to be on the 29th of Saturday. We've been saying it's going to be on the 30th, but we're going to do it the 29th Saturday. We're not sure at the time. We're thinking around 4 o'clock. And uh, if you come for the baptism, we'll also have a cookout. And uh, uh, so... Let's have a final prayer for Tower Hill, and then we have a final song. Lord, we thank you for Tower Hill Assembly of God. We thank you, Lord, for the brethren over there, for Pastor Hamilton. Lord, we pray a blessing upon that church. Continue to bless them, Lord. Continue to have people saved through that ministry, filled with the Holy Spirit. 
have hearts that will follow you with, with uh, everything that's within them. Lord, we thank you for the brethren over there. We pray a blessing upon them in the name of Jesus. May that light shine forth from Tower Hill area, Lord, there in Candy. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's stand and go out with this uh, awesome song. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.